Our show today concerns every one of you watching who's ever had a cavity filled. Because if your filling is made with silver, it probably also contains the highly toxic element, mercury. How toxic? This thermometer contains mercury. If I were to drop it, we would have to evacuate this entire studio immediately. So why are dentists still putting fillings containing mercury in your mouth? And if they're already there, could your fillings be poisoning you and making you sick? They're called amalgam fillings. And more than 100 million Americans to date have had them in their mouths. They're made of silver and other metals, but it's mercury that binds these fillings together and keeps them sturdy. Dentists have been using mercury in dental fillings for more than 150 years. But are they safe? It's a question that first sparked a firestorm 30 years ago when major news reports brought to light the potential toxicity of mercury fillings. The concern? That these fillings may cause serious health problems, from memory loss to mood swings, anxiety, even autoimmune disorders. The American Dental Association insists your fillings are safe. But now, there's mounting new evidence showing mercury is released when you eat and drink, and even when you brush your teeth. According to one report, half of dentists surveyed no longer use them. And if they're inside your mouth, what should you do? I want everyone to take a look in the mirror right now, and if you see these silver, gray, or even black colored fillings in your teeth, that means you have mercury amalgams. It means you need to pay attention to this show. Joining me is integrative dentist, Dr. Jerry Curatola. He has not used silver fillings containing mercury in over 20 years. Also, Dr. Jonathan Levine is an aesthetic dentist and member of this show's advisory board. He has not used fillings with mercury in over 16 years. The American Dental Association says fillings containing mercury are safe and pose no health threat. Dr. Curatola, you argue they have got it all wrong. Why is that? And this is one of the most hotly contested conversations going on in dentistry today. And everyone really deserves to know the facts. There is an ongoing, growing body of research that has shown that uh, mercury from silver fillings can be hazardous. So it's a conversation that really needs to move forward and not to stay in the past. So how much dental amalgam is too much? I showed the audience images of what these look like. Is there a difference between having one filling that's with this amalgam, silver amalgam, or 10? So we really don't know how much is dangerous. And this is where there's not enough controlled studies, but more need to be done. And uh, the reality is, is that the more fillings you have, mercury vapor comes out. When I was in dental school, uh, they used to believe uh, in 1982, uh, the, the ADA was saying that the mercury is locked in, magically locked in the filling. But we know now that there is mercury vapor. It's acknowledged. We just don't know how much really makes you sick. So walk me through the types of symptoms that folks who've, who believe they have poisoning from mercury in their amalgams might be experiencing. And, and I know there's some research on people who've actually had them removed showing improvement in these areas. That's correct. Um, mercury is one of the most neurotoxic, that is damaging to our nervous systems on the planet. It also suppresses the immune system. So you have uh, autoimmune disorders, um, fatigue, memory loss, migraines, even skin problems like psoriasis and eczema that have been linked in different studies to toxic exposure to mercury. I know, I know in medical school we're taught about classic mercury poisoning. Those are mostly neurologic. Can you walk me through, you know, the, the, the things that no one can argue could be related to mercury poisoning? Tremors, uh, memory loss, focus, inability to concentrate. These are the most uh, damaging. It's really extremely toxic to the central nervous system. Right. So there are lots of alternatives now to fillings. Uh, there are many things dentists could be doing to avoid exposure even to themselves. Why is it that so many traditional dentists are still putting in these, these silver amalgam fillings? You know, I'm amazed that 47% um, of the dentists in the United States are still placing amalgam restorations. Uh, there are um, just, they're very inexpensive uh, to do. They're easy, they're cheap, and we know that they've lasted in the mouth for a very long time. There are probably viewers right now who've had um, silver mercury fillings uh, for 20 years or more. I'm one of them. I've got my <laughs> share. Let me bring in Dr. Jonathan Levine. So 
John, you argue that actually is not enough evidence, compelling evidence, correlating mercury as a major threat to our health. And yet, I reported earlier that even you have stopped using them in your practice. Why is that? That's right. I mean, we stopped about 17, 18 years ago. There are just so much so many better restorative options. You're really looking at these white restorative materials that are tooth colored that actually help to hold the tooth together. But the evidence is conflicting and there are questions about the science behind it. Let me challenge you. There, there are some countries in Europe, for example, that have banned the use of amalgams. I mean, they wouldn't do that arbitrarily. It is a very commonly used, well-proven technique. That's exactly right. In the Scandinavian countries, in 2008, they banned amalgams because of environmental and health purposes. Mm -hmm. Now, environmental is when you take out amalgams, and that's when the most amount of mercury is released, it can get into the water supply. There also were a number of studies that came out of Sweden that really showed some health risk with the mercury coming off the amalgams and, and offering up all of these problems that Dr. Curatola is talking about. Walk me through exactly how the mercury gets out of the amalgams. I mean, we yeah. talked about this vaporization that was not known to have existed you know, a few decades ago. That's exactly right. So whenever the amalgam starts to wear any type of contact, so imagine chewing, people who grind their teeth, people who have their factors that increase the amount of mercury uh, vapor coming off, the amount of amalgams in your mouth. How old are they? You know, when they get older, they corrode, and the breakdown of that mercury vapor comes out much greater. Do you grind your teeth for a long period of time? Do you have carbonated sodas, which lowers the pH in the mouth and increases the amount of mercury? So there are a number of factors that actually can accelerate that amount of mercury, but they just haven't tested it enough to correlate it with these medical issues. So I was doing my own homework on this, and mercury vapors rising out of the teeth, they're invisible to the eye. No one has ever seen them. But for the first time on television, for the first time ever, I'm going to show you what happens when you brush your teeth with mercury fillings. I'm going to get some help from my friend Dave Wentz. I worked with Dave and his Ph.D. dad a long time. Their company are big sponsors of Health Corps, which is the Children's Health Foundation. We were doing a program together, and I witnessed you do this demonstration. Uh, with your father it just blew me away and I want you to bring it alive on stage today so if you could show us how this monitor and this little contraption you built can dem can reveal to us what happens when we brush our teeth okay well what we have is a set of teeth with typical silver fillings in them and we've contained it in this glove box with a special air filter to protect everyone in the room so uh, we don't have any mercury uh, okay. toxic yeah. element we don't want it out and so what's the, what's the amount of mercury right now that's in this box? Uh, we, we've ventilated it. We've used the filter to clear it out, so we're at zero now. Okay, so I'm going to put my hands in the glove so you can run the device. And okay. here, just to point yep. out, you, got, you built us a mouth here. Can we all yep. see the mouth there? And what's, what do you have in there? Those, those are amalgam fillings? Yep. Okay. We've been told that when you mix mercury with silver, tin, copper, it becomes completely stable. No mercury vapor is supposed to be released. Uh, and we're going to do a little demonstration to show how much is released. So if I brush, for example, parts of the teeth that don't have any mercury, like here, that shouldn't be a problem. Yeah. But you're arguing that if I brush down here, yep. it is. Okay, go ahead. I'll start brushing now. Now, at what point should I be concerned? At what level is it, you know, more than we're supposed to have? Anything over zero is toxic. So we're at 61. Oh, my goodness. 61? 61 micrograms. Now, how can anyone dispute that mercury is coming off amalgams? I just... You really can't. You, you can't. It's... It's, it's happening. We have the devices. We have the technology to measure that mercury vapor. And we are well above the limits that you would want to be exposed to. That mercury is coming off the fillings into your mouth, going across the blood barrier, into your brain. Thank you very much. And I saw this the first time. And I could not believe that it actually was revealing something that we've been disputing. You know, this is a science experiment, but it does conclusively, to me anyway, demonstrate that we do shed gas off uh, mercury in ways that we don't want to even brush our teeth. Of course, normally we don't measure it in the air in your mouth, although it's concerning that numbers you're not supposed to have in the air are found it's in your mouth, your mouth in high doses. In close space in but your we, mouth. But we were looking at urine oftentimes, which is how you would measure the amount of mercury. So I've got a guest here who actually believed that she had mercury toxicity from her malcolm filling. Dana, thank you for joining us. How are you? Hi, nice to meet you. You can come on down. You always want to be taller than me. <laughs> so I, I'd love to hear your story. I, I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued by this because so many of us have amalgam filling. So what made you believe, uh, actually, what were your problems to begin with? And then what make you, made you believe that mercury fillings were the, were the cause of them? Well, when I was about, when I was younger, I had about 15 mercury amalgam fillings placed in my mouth. And as I got older, I started to have terrible tremors, hand tremors. Um, I couldn't concentrate. 
and I thought I was losing my memory. Um, I know it sounds crazy. No, and I mean, if, there, by the way, I, I hear these complaints from a lot of people. Mm -hmm. We just don't know why they're happening, which is why I'm so curious about this as a potential cause. Right. So how did you actually identify that you had mercury in your body? Did you do any of the tests that are available for that? Yes, I did some urine testing. And you had high levels of mercury? Yes. Did you have the amalgams removed? I had them removed, yes. So then what happened? Um, some of my symptoms went away immediately. Um, other symptoms have taken a while to, to dissipate. Um, I'm still working on them. Are you happy that you had the amalgams taken out? Oh, yes. I would do it again in a heartbeat. You would do it again? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So despite the growing controversy about mercury and amalgam fillings, the official position of the American Dental Association is still that they are harmless. Again, this is a very strong group. They've done many wonderful things. So I wanted to hear from them. And here's what they said. They said dental amalgam is considered a safe, affordable, and durable material that has been used to restore the teeth of more than 100 million Americans and has established a record of safety and effectiveness. So coming up, if you are concerned about what you've heard so far, you may be asking, should I have my mercury fillings removed? The answer will truly surprise you. What's next?